Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. They're tiny and potentially dangerous. They pose risks to people and pets. When it comes to the growing number of ticks, the best defense against disease is education. So today we're called on, we're calling on two experts on the front lines of tick research in Vermont. Patty Casey is the director of the Environmental Surveillance Program with the Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. And Cheryl Frank Sullivan is an entomologist in the at College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at the University of Vermont. Welcome and thank you both for joining us today. Thank you, nice to be yes. here. Thank so, you. There, there was a time when Vermonters worried about ticks in the warmer months. Uh, Patty, is it true that ticks are now a year round issue in Vermont? Great question. Well, um, uh, I grew up in Addison County and I was a real outdoor kid and back then we never saw ticks. And then uh, in the last couple of decades, they've really moved into Vermont kind of with a vengeance. And they at first were primarily <clears throat> a warmer month concern. Um, but now it's clear that ticks can emerge and be active year round. Um, we're seeing more warmer breaks in the winter. Um, they, in order to be active, according to our research, they it needs to be above uh, freezing, but we usually expect 40 degrees or so. Um, that's when we go out, if it needs to be warmer than that. And they need some vegetation to climb, so snow cover factors in. Um, but we have seen them. Last year, we were out in Bennington County um, doing one of our studies um, when we tried to go out once a month. And we did find adult black-legged ticks Questing in February. So, yes, wow. they, they absolutely can be active year round in Vermont now. And and that's most species or, or a lot of species that you're you're tracking. That's that's true for all of them. Well, our surveillance techniques largely focus on black legged ticks, but we pick up dog ticks too. Okay. Um, it's unusual for us to pick up other species that are a little more specialized. We did find a, a squirrel tick last year, I think. Okay. Uh, but there, some of those more specialized species seem to be a little harder to collect uh, with the techniques that we use to conduct surveillance. Okay, so uh, Cheryl, what, what's the main driver of the growing tick problem in Vermont? I, is it all climate change or are there other factors also at work here? So shorter winters certainly do play a role. Uh, in the case of the deer ticks or the black legged ticks that we're concerned about from a medical standpoint, the issue is also linked with forest fragmentation and urbanization. Hmm. And that really influences the distribution of their primary wildlife hosts like rodents where they can acquire a lot of their disease causing pathogens and deer that uh, they feed on in the latter life stages and deer really thrive in these uh, forested edge habitats. So the population of deer has significantly increased over the over the past several years or decades really in a lot of these you know urban areas uh, for a variety of reasons. So when you have uh, places where hosts are high Ticks tend to be really high because ticks are parasites and they live in very proximity of their hosts. Mm -hmm. So when you have uh, these high areas of concentration, the risk for humans and domestic animal diseases is increased where these activity levels overlap. Um, another thing is that birds have also been identified as a key player in the spread of an establishment of ticks to new areas because they can transport them there a lot easy, easier. So if you think of something like the winter tick, um, which is a totally different species that are de decimating our moose, that's another example of when too many hosts are concentrated within that specific habitat. So when you combine these things with, you know, a warming climate that allows this prolonged tick activity, it really can enhance um, these tick epidemics. Well, and, and, in, and in 2021, you identified a new tick species in Vermont, and that's the bat tick. Tell us about that, Cheryl. Sure. So ticks are either called hard ticks or soft ticks. And hard ticks, as the name suggests, they have this hard shield on their back um, or a sputum. And soft ticks don't have that and they're really leathery in appearance. So the bat tick is a soft tick. And until this discovery, only hard ticks were found in Vermont. So during that spring, we had a report of an unidentified bug within a home that had a colony of big brown bats in the attic. 
And we confirmed our suspicions through DNA analyses and from a tick expert down at the Smithsonian. Um, and this tick is actually very elusive and it feeds almost exclusively on bats uh, under the cover of darkness in the dark at night. Um, and these usually occur really only where bats do, like in attics or barns. So sometimes these ticks can get misplaced and they'll accidentally wander off and bite a human uh, or pets. And in this case, it was actually the family's dog. Mm -hmm. So these ticks can have um, bacterial pathogens that can cause diseases, um, but reports of transmissions of those are really rare. And this tick's been showing up a lot more in the past couple years, and it's really unclear why, but we really think the increase in surveillance efforts in general really explains this increased awareness of ticks and new findings as such. So we have bat ticks, we have deer ticks, we have dog ticks, we have ticks that are decimating the moose population. How many tick species are there in Vermont and, and how are they a health threat to humans, Cheryl? Well, we're aware of 15 different species in Vermont and six have potential to transmit disease causing pathogens. Of those uh, six ticks, three species are the most important vectors, and those being the black-legged or deer tick, the American dog tick, and lone star tick. And the latter is kind of a, a rarity in Vermont. And the other nine ticks on that list, um, those really only cause issues for the wildlife that they're associated with. Okay, pretty creepy, I just gotta say. So Patty, <laughs> a, a lot of what we know about ticks is a result of the work of scientists like you and Cheryl, and part of your work involves uh, the statewide tick surveillance program. What does the program do, and what do we learn from it? Well, we actually have several programs um, at the Agency of Agriculture. We have a program in which we partner with the Department of Health. It's a, um, it's a pathogen-driven, uh, surveillance program that takes place in the spring and the fall. Um, and at, we have 48 sites around the state distributed largely around what the health department calls hot spots or cold spots. So places where we know either the tick population has been very high or the pathogen um, prevalence has been high and perhaps in, in um, proximity to uh, population centers. So it's really public health driven. And so that captures um, not only numbers of ticks, but the pathogen or disease information um, and the populations of ticks. So that's one tool that we're using. Um, the Agency of Agriculture, we also have our own internal, what we call a density study. It's a five-year study um, and we're, we're into our second cycle um, in which we visit every town in the state of Vermont within a five-year period we visit once in either the spring or the fall when um, black-legged ticks are um, act, most active uh, adults. And um, we um, take that information, we count, we track uh, population trends. We do um, conduct analyses for um, the pathogen prevalence. So we have a good sense of what uh, the diseases are like in those ticks. Um, we started a study called a phenology study um, a couple of years ago where we chose three sites, one in the north, one central, and one in the south. Um, and we go, we picked sites that we knew we would find ticks. We weren't so much looking for numbers, but we're looking for the emergence of the different life cycles. So um, larvae, nymphs, and adults um, in those three areas. So up north, central, down south. Uh, we go out once a month, weather permitting, um, and try to figure out when they're emerging around the state. This is going to come in very handy. Yeah. So we are so lucky that you're you're out there. I just want to want to move on to the black leg legged tick because um, that's the deer tick, and uh, we know it's responsible for over 99% of all tick-borne diseases in the state for humans. Uh, what do we know about that particular tick, and, and what's happening with that? Well, it, it is what we mostly find in our surveillance efforts. Um, we, um, we do disease testing for Lyme disease, uh, the pathogen that causes Lyme disease, and then a few others um, that are becoming a little bit more um, in the news. Uh, babesiosis, which was just in the news the other day as becoming more prevalent in the tick population, um, anaplasma. 
um, and then a couple of others that are we don't find as frequently. But we we have found the the disease, um, the percentage of ticks in Vermont black-legged ticks that are carrying and therefore capable of transmitting the pathogen that causes Lyme disease in about 55% of the ticks. And that's been fairly steady over our um, over our data over the last several years. Um, I, I, I just wanna make sure we get everything in. Uh, dogs can be carriers of ticks. Uh, should we worry about the dog tick in Vermont? Um, I'm gonna let Cheryl answer okay. that. We, we, don't, um, we don't test them for diseases. So Cheryl can probably speak to that a little bit better. And let's yeah. move right on to winter ticks too, which are really decimating a population, but sorry. So dog and winter ticks. Yeah, so um, the dog ticks and winter ticks, they're the one that you have in the picture there, they're, they're dermacenter species. Uh, the dog ticks actually a three host tick, whereas the winter tick, uh, the dermacenter albipictus that affects a moose is a one host tick. That means they use, you know, different hosts. They need different numbers of hosts throughout their life cycle. So the dog ticks that you see that's in that picture, um, they tend to be more of a, of a tick that's on um, dogs and you pick them up alongside trails. And they, they're actually like drier weather as opposed to black legged ticks, but they can harbor bacteria that causes diseases, but they don't actually, they can acquire the bacteria that causes Lyme, but they, they don't really transmit it to humans. So they're really not um, as big of a threat to humans as say the black legged right. tick. And, and the and picture of the winter tick that you saw, those are just questing larvae. So there, you get thousands of, of those larvae. It's no surprise that moose can have, you know, average over 45,000 ticks, you know, up to 100,000 in total because they pick them, pick those up in the fall. And so it's two just decimating the moose population. It's it's um, really, I, I, I'm sorry, we're out of time. I wanna make sure that um, people uh, are able to get more information. Uh, there are a lot of great online resources in Vermont. You can be tick smart by checking the website for the Vermont Department of Health at healthvermont.gov and you can search for ticks there. Um, so Cheryl, thank you so much for being with us and Patty Cases, uh, you know, a favorite songstress in Vermont and also a scientist. It's great to have you with us. Thank you for all you w the work you do on ticks. We'll, we'll watch for it and, and uh, have everybody take care of themselves around ticks. Thank you. And once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. <laughs>